So um, many spiritual teachers guide us toward awakening to our true nature, known as enlightenment, those who have achieved this. And that's what we're referring to as the receiving mode. Right, right. And so a lot enlightenment is not like a college degree where once you get it, you hang it on the wall and it's yours forevermore. It either yeah. is or it isn't in this moment. In other words, yeah. you're either allowing who you are or you're not. So enlightenment yeah. is a current state of being. It's not ever anything that you can just be. Don't let anybody ever give you a certificate of enlightenment. Right. Yeah. Hand it right back to them and say, this is an ongoing process. Yeah. Yeah, it can only occur in the now, right? And to prove it, just punch them when you give it back to them. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. So those who have described achieving at least this state on a consistent basis, so obviously it's not a college yeah. degree. Instead of mm. calling it a state of enlightenment, mm. let's call it understanding of the laws of the universe and a mm. deliberate interest in applying myself in successful ways. Mm. Let's not try to define ourselves or anyone else as enlightened or not enlightened let's instead say i am aware of the laws of the universe and i intend to be as often as i can in full sync with who i am because that's what enlightenment in the moment is but being enlightened in this moment and then not in another moment esther was in such a state yesterday because she came into this hotel uneasy about its newness and uneasy about the people who had been involved in setting it up that are no longer involved in things so knowing that there were probably loose ends and sensing that they were there not wanting them to be there and Esther did something that she thinks is odd we think it was meant to be because she drags her computer case around like her life depends on it well-meaning people offer to take it for her all the time and she says to them no thank you but what she means is I don't trust you I don't trust you with this you don't understand the importance of this we can't even register our group without this my life is in this don't ask me to turn over something that matters this much to me so she's been walking around for a really long time in fact she has calluses Verify that. Verify that. Right there. That's from that bag. Yeah. Never out of her hand. She'll wrestle a flight attendant to the ground before she'll turn it over. So she checked into the hotel, having fun with friends, had a little expected kerfluffle over her sleeping room because of her vibration was right where she last left it. Walked off and left her bag right there. <laughs> Took her purse, went with the bellman. He dragged her other bag, went to her room, didn't notice it, had lunch. Didn't notice it, didn't think about it. Got ready to come down here to get ready for you last evening. Where's my bag? Where is my life? <laughs> so she went to the front desk immediately so fast that if you had seen her she would have looked like a streak <laughs> she's never moved so fast right to the front desk that she had already defined as somewhat really a lot dysfunctional her check-in had been a little wobbly and she said to them I am quite certain I left my bag here. Where would it be if you were to have found it? Behind this counter or in this receptive area or in a lost and found area. So Esther said, all right. So they looked behind the desk. They went into the other room. They were very kind to her. They called the lost and found and her bag was not there. So she went back to her sleeping room and got out the razor blades. <laughs> Why go on? <laughs> Everything that matters to me is lost. <laughs> and then even amidst all of that, she called her friend who she has another 
opinion about. This is a person who is the most effective in the moment, make anything happen that needs to be happened person that she has ever met in her entire life. She called him and in five minutes he had her bag. It was there. They just couldn't find it. it was right there. There was just such a wave of panic. Esther had been spewing a mist of lost bag that was so thick. The fog was so thick. The lost bag fog was so thick that it took a very clear minded person, not Esther in that moment. Esther could not wear her enlightenment plaque in that moment. So what I'm curious about is, so people who either say that they're consistently in that state or in the moment experience that sense of enlightenment often describe well, it. Yes as recognizing yourself as awareness itself, unconditioned consciousness. Well, that's a good way of saying it because you're in sync and in the receptive mode of source who has a broader view. Esther, in only three occasions in all of the time that we've been interacting with her, has she so clearly put herself out of the receptive mode? Not so far that she didn't know who to call, <laughs> but so far that she was useless to herself in that moment. So the receptive mode, that's what we mean. You either are in it or you're not in the moment. And of course, the more things are always working out for you. In other words, Esther had that underlying thing. She was saying those words to herself, but she certainly wasn't feeling it. Never has she been more keenly aware. Her friend said, so what's this all about? And Esther said, well, the first thing that comes to my mind is the first thing she received, the first idea that she received, because now she's calm, she's back in the receptive mode. The first thing that she received is nothing should matter that much. No thing should matter that much. They're not in this day and age of technology. In other words, no thing should matter that much. Esther says, we have plan A, B, C, D, and E in place relative to all things because it is our powerful intention to provide a smooth, wonderful experience for those that we co-create with. But she didn't have plan B in place for that everything important to her is in one place so she launched some big time rockets of desires didn't she some big time clarity came out of that this is the thing we want you to never again we're saying to esther we want you to never be a slave to conditions you see esther's been saying i don't want to be a slave to conditions i can't control but she's still making herself be a slave to conditions she thinks she can control and we want her to be unconditional. We want her to not be a controller of conditions. We want her to be a receiver of inspiration. And so you can move through the most dysfunctional of environments with people who aren't clear minded, who aren't doing what they usually do or what you want them to do or what you've asked them to do or what they usually do. You can be in a sea of dysfunction like Esther's friend was. He walked into a sea of dysfunction. He could hear it in her voice. He said, I'll look back to her later. He could hear it. He walked into a sea of dysfunction, but stood steady in it, you see. So that's really what you're reaching for. You want to practice it enough that no matter what, you're in vibrational alignment with who you are. And so what if you're not? What is the worst case scenario, really? Don't make Esther think that, about that. <laughs> what is the worst case scenario in other words inconvenience maybe time lost maybe redefining we've been telling a story frequently about a woman who lost her portfolio on her way to, across the country to interview for new jobs she was an artist and had all of her beautiful samples of what she had been doing over the years and someone broke into her car and stole it on the way she was devastated, feeling like Esther was feeling in the losing of her computer. Is microphones, recorders, all the things that mattered. So we said to this woman, what's there doesn't represent who you are anyway. You hold so tightly to what you have or what you believe that you are that often you don't allow yourself the evolution into something that really is a better answer to who you now are. We said to her, that stuff that you painted all those years ago does not even begin to reflect who you are. 
and sometimes when you're carrying things around with you possessions things even relationships but most of all beliefs you prevent yourself from the discovery of the new clear more adventurous more satisfying path by clinging to the things that you have decided are so important you see you want to be a free floater in this universe of ideas you want to be a ready receiver for the new ideas that are coming to you not holding and clinging to what once was the best translation we want you to look future into your vortex not back into present tense not backwards into present tense not backwards into present tense yeah okay. so would you say that source or Abraham is awareness itself unconditioned awareness itself prior to all thought all manifestation the space or now within which everything happens is that who we are we would not say awareness of all thought we would say awareness of the most leading edge thought if you are in awareness of all thought you are contradicting the leading edge thought because the thought that was before the leading edge thought is resistant to the leading edge thought yeah. <laughs> So not all thought, the most current, the most active, the most leading edge thought. You're here sorting it out, defining it. And source receives every definition, every modification, every evolution, every expansion of every idea and holds the vibration of that steady for you to find your way to. Consciousness is a good word for that. Yeah. Consciousness, awareness. Yeah, that. But that, not of all thought. Right, but like Leading prior it. to thought, almost like because when you meditate, you're not thinking. You're still you, but. But you didn't ask us about you. You ask us about source. But we are source, right? Well, be nice if you'd let yourself be. Yeah. You could be. You could be. Source is. Yeah. You could be too, but source is. Yeah. Source is on it, and your question was about source you said Abraham or source yeah we are in that vibration of the powerful nowness nowness yeah. that is so now and when we're in that state of receptivity then you're you, enlightened you sense that yeah that the sense of I'm just being this itself in this moment and think about what it feels like activate the feeling of it feels like clarity feels like fun feels oh, like geez. Life feels like well-being, feels like comfort, feels like knowing. That's the natural state for you. You have lots of words for it. You call it enlightenment. Yeah. We call it temporary. Yeah. Yeah. We call it potential. We call it a work in progress. We call it what you're reaching for. Yeah, that's good. So my one other question is, all spiritual traditions from what I can tell have such a root kernel of truth and then often there's some distortion and misunderstanding over time but the kernel forget about the kernel forget about the beginning of it yeah. because the beginning of it is old yeah. the beginning of it isn't up to speed it isn't up to date it isn't current you see yeah. so to the degree that someone who is translating is in vibrational alignment with what source now is expressing to that degree whatever that is is rooted in sourciness mm -hmm. <laughs> dot com someone call mark quick So it seems that out of the vortex, people often tend to find a way of misinterpreting teachings over time or find a way of using it in resistant ways. So, well, everyone means well, but yeah, most yeah. everyone is very conditional. Yeah. It isn't the easiest thing in the world to live in an environment where you're surrounded by conditions and not be affected by those conditions.